I'm sitting in front of my Harrison M300 lathe. This video is going to be about how I've configured the VFD and also how I've added a contactor between the single phase supply and the VFD. So just a quick bit of background to this machine. By default, it would have had a three phase supply, an industrial three phase supply, and it's still got the original three phase motor, but I've dispensed with the all the three phase switch gear. And in fact, I've dispensed with the original control as well and I've added a new control panel there. So let's just have a quick, very quick look at what the control would have originally been. The original control would have been via this lever to uh, stop and forward and reverse the machine. Now, um, personally, I don't like the controls down there. I mean, they work, they're fine, uh, but uh, for consistency with the other machines that I've got, I prefer a panel like this. And also it's actually easier to set up a panel with momentary contact switches with a push to make and push to break switch like that, rather than the lever. The lever operates some micro switches down at the end, but because the lever actually maintains its position, effectively it's like a maintained switch. So rather than having momentary switches, you've got to have maintained switches. That does create issues um, with the interaction between that, those switches and also an e-stop. It's not impossible to set up, but it's just easier to do it like this. So uh, just quickly looking at the panel then, it's fairly intuitive. Uh, we've got stop, red, green, start. We've got forward and reverse via a toggle switch. We've got a rotary potentiometer there changing the speed. And then we've got an, what looks like an e-stop, uh, but not quite, okay? Let's just see the machine running. So we've got a VFD active light here. Now what this shows me is when the coil to the uh, contact is energized. And at the moment it's not, so effectively I've got the machine turned off. It's not quite turned off because I've still got a work lamp on uh, and that's powered by a 24 volt uh, power supply, which is down in the cabinet. You'll, you'll see that later. But uh, at the moment, this, this safety switch has been pressed. So the machine is effectively disabled in terms of the VFD anyway. If I uh, turn that, so that's now unlocked, that's popped back out. The VFD is active. You may have heard a click. That's the contactor, uh, the coil to the contactor. Uh, is energized and then so it's pulled the contacts in so now uh, we have supplied a voltage to the VFD so the VFD is now active. So now if I start the machine I can do that I can change I can reverse direction of the track as well. Uh, the rate of acceleration and deceleration is of course configurable I've got a stop switch there, and also there's a foot stop switch, which I'll just briefly demonstrate. And so that's a mechanical stop, as well as a VFD stopping the chuck. Okay, so um, if I press the stop, obviously it stops, as you know, so let's just quickly start again. So if I just press this, this is what I would uh, describe as a regular stop, so that's the one which I would use normally and the VFD is still powered. So I haven't turned off the power to the VFD. But how about if I wanted for some reason to disable the VFD, that's where this comes in. So maybe I'm changing the chuck or something, or I just, just want the VFD uh, to be definitely, definitively off, or maybe even, I've, I've never heard of this happen, but maybe the VFD is malfunctioned and it's doing stuff you don't want to do, so you definitely want to cut the power. So, so this is the one to hit in that case. So. If I press this, um, what looks like an e-stop, then the VFD is no longer going to be powered. And, okay, so that, that's fairly intuitive. What I'm doing there, I'm turning off the power to the coil for the contactor, so then it's disabling power to the VFD. But it's doing a little bit more than that. Because, let's just re-enable it. So, um, it's... You can't just do that. Otherwise, effectively, it's like uh, turning off the, the switch or you know unplugging the lathe while it, while it could be running. And the VFD isn't going to be particularly happy with that. So if I've got the machine running and then now I hit the safety, remember I'm, I'm um, removing power from the VFD. If you do that and you're just like basically unplugging the VFD, on this particular VFD I've got, which is a, a WEG, a WG, um, CFW300 I think, that if you do that, then uh, the VFD detects that there's a, uh, a low input voltage, and I think it gives uh, an F 
021 error, I think, which is a low DC bus link error, I think, okay? Uh, I would need to check the error codes. But basically what it detects is that the, um, the voltage is too low and then it will raise an error code. If that happens and then you power the VFD on again, you won't be able to start the VFD because it's detected or previously detected an error. So it wants you to clear that error. Uh, but pressing this button is a little bit more, uh, a little bit more clever than that because when I press it, not only does it actually uh, remove power to the coil to the contactor, therefore the contactor drops out, power is cut to the VFD, but I've also got a, basically it's like it's like two single pole single throw switches behind here, uh, and then that also sends simultaneously sends a digital signal to the VFD to go into safety or shutdown mode. So that ha happens instantaneously. So there's no uh, issue about the power having also simultaneously been cut because it's like happening at exactly the same time. So. Um, now that I've pressed that, I still have power to the uh, the work lamp, so so that's that's fine. I mean, that might be important to still have power to the work lamp, um, so I'm not immersed in darkness. Let's say if there's some some issue, um, but the the VFD is no longer powered. So the VFD, if it's no longer powered, cannot run. Now I know that some people sometimes consider adding a contactor between the VFD and the motor and I can see the sense in that you can absolutely say if you disconnect the motor from the VFD then that motor cannot be running anymore. Um, but I think the general recommendation is to not put a, a contactor between the VFD and the motor, rather put the contactor between the power supply uh, side, the incoming mains uh, and the VFD itself. So um, I will just uh, reposition the camera and we'll have a look down in the control cabinet at the left hand side to get a bit of a clearer idea, clearer idea of uh, what I've done.